together and just pray in the spirit for a minute. Those outside, it's quite uncomfortable, but let's pray. Let's hold our hands and begin to pray in the spirit. Jesus, thank you. Please hold hands with someone and let's just pray. Let's talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's add two more prayer points before we sit down. Lord, cause my heart to believe your word. Lift your voice and pray. Not just to hear it, cause my heart to believe your word. Are we praying? Pray from the depth of your heart. Cause my heart to believe your word. I'm not a doubter tonight. You are not a man that you should lie. You've heard the testimonies. You've seen what God is doing in the lives of people. Do not let unbelief exempt you from that experience. Oh, I decree and declare, my faith is alive. My faith is alive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul told his son in the gospel, Timothy, he said, Meditate on these things. Give yourself, not your brain, not your head alone. Give yourselves wholly to them. He says that your profiting will appear unto all. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, the word must be manifest in my life. I must have results in my life. The word of God must be potent, potent, potent. Pray, potent enough to produce results. Shabakapos. The word of God must be potent. My life must become an epistle, a living epistle. A living epistle. More of you, my 
still gathered in your presence because we believe you we place value on your wisdom we place value on your anointing we place value on you the custodian of the power of God we ask tonight that you visit us in no small way that our hearts be open O oh God your people have made tremendous sacrifices to hear you speak again I ask, O oh God, that your voice be clear tonight. Let there be all kinds of impartations, O oh God. Bring your people to very strange levels of encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. I'd like us to honor again those outside. All the overflows. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot of sacrifice. Thank you so much. We will stand in the golden sea in the new Jerusalem and our will be no more. And we will see that is stable and cry holy is the land we will worship and adore you evermore we will stand in the golden city Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very, very strategic. This, this for me is a teaching for the body of Christ. We are going to pray. It's actually a prayer meeting. If we are unable to finish today, we'll continue um, wherever the Lord will grant us grace to stop. But I'm sharing something that I believe will challenge our hearts. It's a very ancient truth that most pastors, most church leaders are forgetting. What I'm sharing with you tonight is the secret of preserving the precepts of God in a territory and a generation. Hallelujah. Open our eyes, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 5. And verse 10. Testimony in the heavens 
that we the redeemed have not only been saved and delivered but that we have been made unto our God kings and priests some versions say a kingdom of priests please listen and it says and we shall reign on the earth we have been made a kingdom of kings and of priests and we shall reign on the earth these two dimensions that the Bible reveals is very critical for kingdom advance in any territory. The revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood. The revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood. The Bible says we have been made both kings and priests. And that the system of our legislature must be such that it is covered within the scope of our kingship and priesthood. That if we find ourselves living as kings alone, there is a dimension of God and kingdom advance that cannot be effectively dispensed. And if we ignore that dimension as kings and focus on our priesthood alone, as important as that is, we will still rob God from finding expression within a territory. Very important teaching tonight. The first thing I want you to know tonight is that kingdom advancement is territorial. It's an information that I do not want us to be, take lightly and to be careless over. Kingdom advancement, although the mandate is global, God's system of advancement is territorial. Everybody say kingdom advancement is territorial. This for me is already a big deliverance for men of God. Because sometimes in a bid to take over the world, are we together now? We do not understand that the system of kingdom advance is the progression of God's purposes across territories. Are we together? From one territory to the other. God's idea of globalizing the earth with his presence and ideology it's not just jumping from place to place. It's not just building branches. But being able to establish practically the life, the character, the nature of the kingdom across a territory. So God's rating for a believer, for a man of God, for a church. Although your, the scope of your mandate may be global. But you are rated based on your efficiency across the territory you have been planted per time are we together now that means that if god has planted koinonia in zaria in this time and in this season no matter how effective our teachings the external ministrations are across the nations of the earth that is not going to be the parameter for god's rating primarily he is going to judge us based on the efficiency how we have taken advantage of his presence, the intelligence he has supplied alongside the grace that has come by the supply of the spirit. How we have been able to establish his purposes across this territory. So that's the first point I want you to understand tonight. That this king priest dimension, the system of legislature is highly territorial. We live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion. And there's nothing wrong with that. We love expanding. It's a proof of growth. But sometimes we can be carried away in the euphoria of the, the sociological effect of expansion. And miss out on territorial impact. Where we are unable to, to live out the fullness of God's expectation. As a portion to a territory. It was Jesus that taught us in Matthew chapter 5. From verse 14 to 16. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. This is what Jesus said. He was teaching. And he said, ye are the light of the world. Now when you read and try to understand what Jesus is saying. Just with head knowledge. It can be very deceptive. Because you see, the speakings of God is such that he speaks to men. When he's speaking to one man, he speaks to the nation in him. Are you getting the point now? 
I told you that when God speaks to us, we must learn the character of God's communication. I've taught it here again and again in Koinonia. That number one, when God speaks to you, He never speaks as though He's speaking to a man. The first thing we need to understand about the speakings of God, I'm just digressing to help us understand. God never speaks to men as though He's talking to men. He speaks to men as though He's talking to Himself. Number one. Number two, God's communications are prophetic. The relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it. The individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word. God never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone. He sent a word to Jacob and then that word lighted upon Israel. God always speaks to nations in men. Are we learning now? So every time God speaks to you, sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you. And if we do not understand the speakings of God, we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us, thinking because you had it. God can speak to me for instance and say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of God's life across the earth. And I can walk in the deception believing that it simply means that I will pioneer the move of God in every nation. No. When God was speaking, He was speaking to you in me. Are we together now? It is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass. Now, if you do not understand this dimension of God's speakings, you will end up in error. His rating for men is global prophetically. But experientially, He deals with men territorially. Learn this. The church in Pagamos, the church in Smyrna, the church in Philadelphia, not the church in the world. When the Spirit of God began to speak in revelations from where we would get some of these things, he says, right, the communication was to the whole world, but he broke it down to several churches. He would come to this church and commend them I have weighed you. I have seen what you have done across that territory. A and B and C is what you have done in alignment to my purposes. D and E, you are in defiance to my precepts. Here's my advice. Correct yourself. Otherwise, because of your disalignment, you and that territory will suffer certain things. His system of marking was territorial. It was never generic. He did not generalize his probing. He went to the churches one by one. The church in Pagamos, the church in Philadelphia, the church in Smyrna, the church in um, you know, Ephesus, and so on and so forth. Kingdom advance is territorial. It is true that we are the light of the world. It is true that we are a city that is set on a hill. But then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that God places men in territories. When God wants to promote men, He promotes men by supplying three things. Number one, a greater dimension of illumination. I'm, I'm touching on many things now. The first way God promotes men is by opening them to deeper access, understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom. The moment the portals of the heavens, the portals of revelation are open to you, higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three there is an increase and a portioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone god lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory Are we together? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Very popular scripture. Jesus was teaching. Having resurrected, he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave. And then they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he replied by saying, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his care. Then verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power.
power listen carefully after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of god witnesses witnesses unto me then he begins to apportion territories he would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world full stop but now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving and they would be the ones to start and he's telling them look 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 the goal is the utmost part of the earth but it will be broken into territories first jerusalem then judea then samaria and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth the first crusade that happened after christ resurrected the bible says that something happened on the day of pentecost now peter was preaching and when peter began to preach in chapter 2 of acts the bible says that the men were caught to the heart listen carefully and then they said men and brethren what shall we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise this is the part i'm going to he said for this promise is for you are you saying now for your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said i shall pour out my spirit on all flesh so why tell us again it is to you your children children's children and to those who are far off as many as the lord will call god's dealings is territorial that means a true believer's assignment is to look at the whole world but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned that is where your ranking that is where your marking that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres both in the spirit and physically our obsession for more our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful write this down our mandate as matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories. Our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence, the power, the system, the glory of God in that territory. If we fail to carry this out, then we have failed woefully. Listen again, that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers, not just to be prosperous, that's important, not just to build churches and ministries, but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us. That means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria. Listen carefully. There is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria. There is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos, in Kogi State. And those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers not just those who advance and win souls but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of god this in my opinion is one of the biggest mistakes of the western church they they, they lost a part of their assignment they were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a god that has been apportioned to that territory and it is within the power of all the men of god within that dispensation 
to walk with the Holy Spirit and to preserve that truth. When a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost, they cannot hold certain dimensions of Him. The church in Nigeria is a wonderful place. You know that I love the church. I love the body of Christ. But I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty. And we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of God or the denomination our idea is to make sure that in every territory there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory if we fail to do that we have missed a lot if you're understanding me say amen One of my greatest fears in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation. It is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire. Are we together now? Yes. Tonight, tonight is, is, is more... It's more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, territories. We must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens. There is too much guessing in the body of Christ. And everybody believes he is right. But our results are showing that there is inefficiency. There is inefficiency somewhere. There are activities going on. There are programs going on. Conferences going on. And nothing is wrong with those things in themselves. Except that the heart of God's intent is seldom being communicated. And that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance. It is God's desire, John chapter um, 15 now and verse 8 that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides meaning your fruit can be lost are we together we have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church. That we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved. The average believer does not know what to do with a new convert. Is that true? The moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say, Please, um, I'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister. You will be shocked. To find out that that person may even be a pastor in church. That that person may even be a deacon. That person may be a worker, a leader. Having been around the things of God for many years. Sitting down under spiritual leaders. But not knowing what to do. Say, so, well, I don't know what to do with this person. What is step B? After giving your life to Christ, how do ordinary believers become spiritual men? Do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say, look, in three weeks, we should be able to see certain things happen in this life. 
Listen, let me tell you the truth. If we do not re-examine this, I truly believe that a few years from now, the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear. With all humility and with all love for the body of Christ, look at the caliber of we pastors and men of God that are handling the pulpit. We are largely ignorant people. Ignorant of the precepts of God. Ignorance of the methodology of God. We just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denomination's requirement for ordination. And all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds, thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirits to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic. And we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach. Hook, line and sinker. The life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of God. The average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all. We don't know, we don't care, we are not even interested. What do you do? Do you know? That's why, look at the body of Christ. The gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide. What happened? Are you getting what I'm saying? In a whole territory, you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually. And then that's alright. But the next set of people will be so far apart. I have seen churches where in a whole church, only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire. Out of a church of maybe 30 pastors, 27 of them, when they come and hold the mic, then you see on the board, Pastor this. Apostle, this time you say, my God, who called this guy to ministry? What is he saying? Opinions, philosophies, cunningly devised fables. Are we together now? And look at the quality of men and women who are being produced. It's a disaster that requires a quick rescue. Many believers do not know God. Many believers do not know the Holy Spirit. Many believers do not know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Many believers do not know scripture. Many believers do not even understand the system of God. Many believers go to church, I agree. Many believers take communion, I agree. Many believers join in general church prayer, I agree. But very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation. I'm not talking of men of God. I'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy. The, the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly. Grossly. We see the ease with which darkness looms around territories. As though there are no believers there, but the Bible says you are the light of the world. It didn't say you are the noisemakers. It didn't say you are the discussers. You are the light. You bring illumination. You are a city that is set on a hill. I think it's Philippians chapter 2. When you read from verse 13 to 16, it starts by saying, Do everything without complaining or arguing. I'm sure I'm right. And then it says that he will be blameless. Um, okay, for God it. That he may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. What is your mandate? Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Next verse. It says holding forth. 16. Holding forth the word of life. Holding forth the word of life. Not cunningly devised fables. Not the discussions of men. Are we together? We have lost too many things in the body of Christ. We have lost power. We have lost a voice. No, we, we have to. We have been downgraded 
to a realm of Scientology and carnality, there must be a drastic upgrade. Otherwise, something will be wrong. We will not know the difference between spiritism and Christianity or Scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things. Are we blessed? Preserve us of the ordinances of God in a territory. Mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of God. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you. I will reverence you. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill that should never, never be confused. He says it is the church. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Christianity is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger, but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger. We scarcely understand the secrets of God. The pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace, a man of power and relevance. I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray. Six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory. in the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit volcano in the spirit Shabbat she goes like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let me get to my this man is obsessed Still see this fire inside, outside. I'm seeing it. It's like a volcano. When when you see God doing these kinds of things, it's, it's not show. It's not show. He's bringing witness. He's bringing witness to the spirit of man, because the word of God must have an agency for performance. He's he's working on people. I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding. Then the fire is dropping on people. This is what I see in the spirit. The 
this is what I see in the spirit. He's making us witnesses, testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God, we talk about them. They left with the secret because there were no men to receive. They left with the secret. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. supernatural spiritual you must you must understand the realm of the spirit and sustain capacity to interact with that realm otherwise you will not do much i promise you that you must you must learn how to walk with god such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway. There is a pathway that produces that effect. It's not an exclusive preserve of particular men. There is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of God's presence. It's like a perfume. So every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show you are anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. And for as long as you are there, you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them. This is not just talk, talk, talk. All this empty talk, we keep mocking ourselves. The Bible says, for I did not come to you with the excellency of speech. It is not just about oratory. No. This is not grammar. This is the reality. The Bible, Paul calls it the mystery of godliness. That God can be embodied, domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood. But produce an effect that is strangely supernatural. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with spiritual power. Men follow pathways. It's an ancient path that has been lost. There's too much talk, too much grammar, too much preaching, too much listening to every man of God's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage. If, let me tell you the truth. If we do not trust God to touch reality, we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves. Do you know what, what the average young preacher does? Hold on. What the average young man, not just your young believer who loves God does, is he finds the tapes of five, six, seven, eight men of God around the world and just puts them together and listens to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed. That's a joke. If that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man, it's a, it's a big joke. A big joke. A big joke. The realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom. It's a place where men are made genuinely. There, there, are, there, are, there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit gives that ranking. Nobody, you can pretend you have it. Many people pretend they have it. But when the door settles down, 
hear the testimonies, Kai, we have lost something serious. We must trust God to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of God. Otherwise, some of the young believers coming up, the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again. And then they get born again and they don't know what to do. And it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in, week out. Everybody is a general overseer. Everybody is a president. Everybody is an apostle. Everybody is a prophet. Everybody is a pastor. Hilarious ordinations happening left, right and center. And everybody is just holding the mic and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach. I say this out of love for the body. But we must return. We are losing something. We are losing something very powerful. We are losing something. The ordinances, the precepts of the spirit. There is a spiritual formula that men are subject to. We are losing it in the name of ministry, in the name of globalization, in the name of making sure we expand. No, sir. The average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not. The average believer does. The only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy, there is a consolation based on that energy. So it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered. What, what sort of an, an education is that? The average believer studies the Bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt. The personal guilt that comes from messages every Sunday that you must be spiritual. It is not a personal appetite. It's not a search. If, if that guilt were taken away from us, we would throw the Bible in a heartbeat. That's why we love using any other thing, job or whatever. It's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free. So we can't say we are not serious. So when there is a legitimate crown, then we excuse it. How the precepts of God are preserved in the territory. Our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, the first way, listen carefully, that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory, like our territory, Zaria here for instance, is prayer. Write it down, prayer. The first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer. Warfare and intercession, write it down, a lost act in the body of Christ. Genuine warfare and intercession. Let me tell you something. If we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession, that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another. I promise you. I promise you. Our, our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God. Brothers and sisters, it takes prayer. It takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be opened over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established. Warfare. Ezekiel chapter 22. It's a long reading, 23 to 31. But the verse of emphasis is verse 30. Ezekiel 22. Please help us, media. Ezekiel chapter 22. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, 
Long reading, quickly, please. Just go to verse 30. Because at the, at the way we are going, we are going to waste too much time. And I sought for a man among them. Now, this was God angry with the territory. That's why what I wanted us to read, but because of time, we'll just look at 30. God was angry with the territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment. And God said, that mercy dimension of me was still there. But I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. For what? For the land, not for the church. I'm talking about taking over territories, preserving the precepts of God over a territory. A man that will stand for the land. So there are men that can stand for the land, not just their churches. That because of their presence and the business they do with God, certain things can happen to territories. They don't even know why it came and how it came. But a man stood for a land. That I should not destroy it, but I found did he say, I did not find human beings? There were human beings. Many. But I found none. That man, built in capacity and understanding. The ministry of prayer. Let me tell you this. Believe me. Hear me, church of the Lord Jesus Christ, everywhere. Here in any nation. But more specifically in Zaria. If we stop praying in Zaria, because of some kind of spiritual laziness, you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city. Are we together? The ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation. I don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of God or a civil servant or a politician. The ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not just need driven prayers alone. But we must graduate from realms of just praying, give me tea, give me bread, to taking over lands. That because of your presence in the territory, you subdue the controlling powers. The powers that mold the mindsets of people. The powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation. That you come into a city and find accidents anyhow. All kinds of things anyhow. And you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory. And part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy. That you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers. That's what men did in the Bible. Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we together? Preserve the family of Lot. The wife chose the way she wanted. Joseph stood in. Preserve certain things. Daniel stood in. Preserve. Are you not men who preserve the purposes of God? Their generation. The ministry of warfare and prayer. The ministry of warfare. Ephesians chapter 6. When we read from verse 10 to 19. The Bible tells us. Listen carefully. The Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then it says we should put the full armor of God. Are we together? Then it says how that we, we do not war against principalities and powers. But against um, rulers and flesh and blood. But principalities and powers and all of that. It begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist. Hold on. Let me preach to educated people. You know sometimes because we have gone to school. Because we are rich. Small money. Small job. We... Um, and sometimes innocently and truthfully I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something Satan is many things a fool is not one of them are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is defeated Satan is old Satan is several things but a fool is not one of them he has the advantage of age Time. He has studied mankind. Different species of people have lived upon this earth. He has had an advantage of 
one-to-one experience. Satan has existed before several dispensations, before Adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea. Every territory has controlling powers. Every territory has controlling powers. If you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory, brothers and sisters, it's not because the controlling powers are not there. An agency in the spirit, a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression. That's why I said if we stop praying, Or, if we concentrate on childish, immature prayer. Lord, give me tea. Tomorrow again, oh God, I forgot to ask for bread yesterday. There is a place where you ask for your needs. But notice how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we reverence you. After reverencing him, the next thing is your agenda. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come upon a land, upon a territory. Listen. The concept of prayer chains, the concept of prayer groups, the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, the, the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying, carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people. What is the name of this ministry of four of us? I don't know who taught us that prayer groups, prayer cells, prayer chains, there should be some structure of leadership. But, you know, we have this mentality and, and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of God. The moment people start praying, everybody is obsessed about who is the leader, who has the protocol to follow him. If, if we do like that, then the devil is going to destroy us. In every city and territory in Zaria, there should be prayer portals. That's how the kingdom works. I'm a good student of revivals. That's how it should work. In Samaru, there should be units of men and women praying. High in Dogo, there should be people. There has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis. That's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around. And notice that's what Satan hates. The moment there are people praying, some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere. Preservers of the ordinances of God. Gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups. Now churches start as intentional, organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God. Are we together? That before a man of God starts ministry, he has sewn his clothes for one year. Are we together? The offering basket has been made. Tight envelope is, in, is, is intact. What is it? We, we better be careful. This joke that we keep joking with ourselves. Every correct ministry starts as a... It doesn't... Let me tell you, most men of God that are being used mightily by God today, ask them, their intention was never ministry. They were men who made themselves available. When God called them, they went back and cried and said, God, can you use somebody else? God will say, you are the person. You can choose to say no, but I'm not using any other person. You are the one I will use. But now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing. And the devil doesn't, he, he doesn't stop us because there's, whether we are in it or outside, it's, it's, it makes no difference to him. We are still equally ignorant. Prayer. That's how this ministry started. Prayer. Every day, fire on the altar. And I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes. And you say, let's, let's thank God. That's Bible study. Prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit. Only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things. Strengthen the understandings of the people. The fire continues. This is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity. Let me be honest with you. Many territories have a lot of repentance to do. Many families have a lot of repentance to do. The 
the prayer lives of many people are under attack. When the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer, he tells your prayer to become a selfish one. So you are praying for hours, but you are making minimal, minimal spiritual progress. I insist, prayer chains, prayer groups, there are many of you here that the burden is in your hands. It's not carnality and it is not ministry either. When you, let me teach you something. Every time you get to a new land, before you get accommodation, find somewhere where you can pray. Scan around the back of one tree. Shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody. If that's what, dedicate it as an altar to start with. Don't go around and say, where can I get a hotel and all this rubbish? No. Find a place to pray. Somebody will join you. Another person will join you. The devil is in trouble. Once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be prayed. Apostle, but what is the name of the ministry? It's not, it doesn't have a name. The ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of God are portioned for that territory. So it doesn't matter where you are. The assignment is the same. If you leave Zaria for a three-week break and you are in Kogi for that three weeks, every demon and devil in Kogi state will feel the fire when you return. It doesn't matter. Someone else who is returning there. So there's fire everywhere. Say everywhere. But now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire. Do you know, whenever you travel for a ministry, to a, to a ministry. The purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar. The purpose is to carry like a coal. You go and fetch some of it. Are we together? That's why when I see people come from other places, I like laying my hands on them. It's not just for showmanship. So you carry something. The goal is to take it back to your territory. The same way we do in the physical. When they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them, what do they do? They pick one man. Is that true? Or a few people. Send them abroad for the training. When they return back, they teach the people. Not shine with it. Not shine with it. This is where we are missing it. Train the people. One of the biggest killers in ministry is tied to and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the, the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children. You start praying in two months. Everybody that comes here is your child. Including people like our mother here that came to... All, all this, this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries. This title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of God in many territories. Do you know there are people as students... Years ago, there are people who had different prayer groups. When, when all of them were finishing, they just left. They've gone on other places doing great things. But most of us, you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper. Who is really the secretary among these five people? We need to define it because the other day, I didn't tell anybody to leave prayer. And this other lady suddenly, when did she join this thing before? And you see, we, we start politicizing it. Are you not from Adam? Or me too, I'm from Adam. That one came, I don't say from Lagos. He said, we don't want to bring all these kind of things. And we kill the move of God with very frivolous, childish things. Another thing that kills prayer is love. No, not love, relationship. Hello? I keep saying it. There are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying. All this thing of coming to the house of God for one month and you're already eyeing every sister, every brother, you are in love. No, sir. This is not how we train people. We train people to look for God first. Press into God. Have a testament, a, a track record. Then you can love. But now everybody is, is just, you come in two days, you are praying. People are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing 
is you are looking out for, for who it is to marry. I'm not saying God cannot use those platforms. In fact, God should use them. Are we together? However, your heart, if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband, you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first. Most people who become mightily used by God never go there to marry. They go there to seek God. They pray with all their heart and serve. And one day while they are praying, God will tell them, you see this, this, this lady? It's even God that will tell them, my son, look, you have been serving me sincerely. This, this one that you are serving, you need a helper. I said, God, I can continue. God, it's me that I say you need a helper. But now, we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven. A prayer request, full of, oh God, won't I marry and God, what have you done for me? You have not done anything. Nobody has been saved as a result. It's a scam to come to the house of God. You are not contributing anything. And the next thing you want to take, and, and usually it's God's best we want to take. Oh, come on, please. Are we blessed? Let me be honest with you, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's return to the place of seeking God sincerely and passionately. Or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking. What did this one, this prayer group, ah, I like these suits that this one is wearing. I know, no. Father, your kingdom come in this territory. There is darkness. Lord, we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months. That means there is a spirit passing through that territory, unhindered. And all of a sudden, one faithful day, that spirit will hear a sound from the earth. Shakatakatakata. Lekotakatabriakata. As he's moving to high in Dogo, someone is taking it from there. Let me tell you how you drive spirit. You make the heavens unconducive. Don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always live where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory. And then return back. This is how many of those we admire today. That's how they were raised. They were never... And you means here, ask him, those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started, when you got born again, in two weeks, it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ. Because there was fire everywhere. There still is. But because we are a lot more organized now, it is very difficult. When people got, there were people who would get born again, filled with the Holy Spirit from day two, they start prophesying. And even with the prophesying, they are not going anywhere. Because there are still demons to get out of there. As they finish prophesying, they want to humble themselves and sit down and learn. But now someone gets born again. After one month, because of the gift of the Spirit, he prophesies, she prophesies the next thing. They start speaking to people. They speak mistakes into the lives of people. Because they are seen correctly, but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there. And before you will now learn and grow, you have misled several people. Gift is not maturity. You need to stay with God. No matter how you rush, you must stay. That fire, that fire is the maker of men. Anybody that dodges fire, don't trust him. Don't trust him. You must be refined as of gold. Our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek God. Say amen. Prayer. I'm encouraging I'm encouraging the church in Zaria. I'm encouraging the church everywhere. There must be prayer units. Most ministries do it. But many ministries, what, what they do is not really prayer unit. It's just maybe home sales, which is wonderful. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Do you know why we will not do it as Koinonia? Because you are an extension of the ministry. The goal is not Joshua Selman in every home. The goal is the kingdom, the power, the glory of God. Your house can become an altar. Your small area can become an altar. Two of you, three of you can begin to pray. It doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. 
you do this and see what begins to happen let me tell you what begins to happen the moment you pray there will first be silence one month two months you will start seeing physical agitations the demons that are resident in men will start reacting something is happening in the realm of the spirit your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain and say look um you are becoming proud and you say no no sir i'm not because you are becoming proud the moment they say that remember spiritual intelligence you know it's not the individual you you respect the body but go back in the spirit and say satan i'm still there i know it's you jesus looked at peter and said satan get thee behind you and you go and continue and then one day let me tell you how god will announce that he has come to that territory a spectacular move of god will happen one day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in a house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer the Holy Spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are it should be a place to come and receive a greater fire can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find a space to me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact not titles. If you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church, lock it down and go and start praying. Alone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't invite anybody. Let them come and meet you praying. And you are praying and God is watching you. My beloved son. No carpet. No canopy. No mic. No suit. No nothing but a genuine desire to seek him. And God is saying, I, I am watching. Listen, all this, all this running around, am I a prophet or am I apostle? Is nonsense. It is the place of prayer and work. There is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with God knowing who he is. Even if God tells you it will not look like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All this I am apostle. This just wait and see it will happen. You are joking. Nothing will happen. It is in the place of prayer. As that fire refines you, it starts drawing you to become something. And everybody starts saying, this is the training of a prophet. Even you, you may mistake yourself for an evangelist. Because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that no this training is not an evangelist training ah, why is this unusual ah, there are people who think they are calling their 
some of you here seated you are born prophets with the office of a prophet but you have not seen one vision because it's not about the vision keep praying just continue just continue you will argue with anybody and say no sir i'm not a prophet me i i know i'm a pastor because i'm a good teacher you will find out that teaching is not even part of it just keep praying the refiner's fire comes through that prayer when your heart is being purged are we together now flesh is being taken away one day you begin to pray and all of a sudden you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me they are wrong they don't know it is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you you say you are a pastor who told you just because someone prophesied he saw a part and he said so he may be right but he may not be it no don't say just because you saw a ring you saw a hand you say i'm a prophet i'm a prophetess i'm an apostle no sir don't flatter yourself let the place of prayer incubate you when you come out fully the name that you are will be shown not just by titles results 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 will show who you are if you are a prophet don't tell us let the results show it show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer show us the acumen the ability to perceive realities that's what makes a prophet show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit don't come and talk jargons and waste our time show us the performance that comes based on the word of god show us the throne in heaven that backs that office don't say i'm an apostle show us the throne that backs you show us the keys of the territory that was given to you we go around bragging calling ourselves names flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, O oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. The ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shagata gata. Lake tosta tosta briata. Restore my fire. Restore it, O God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. Makato kata kata kata. Shake it, shake it. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail.
at you, no matter how western, those of you listening from other nations of the world restore prayers back to your homes, restore prayer back to your churches, whether you are in America, whether you are in London, it doesn't matter where, restore prayer back, prayer has equal value everywhere whether you are rich or poor, your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life number two How are the ordinances of God advanced and preserved? A regular convergence of believers within that territory. The second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped 
empowered. There is no territory that can preserve a spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers. Be it a regular church service, be it a midweek service, be it different interdenominational programs, it doesn't matter. There has to be a regular convergence. There must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch. They are trained. They are equipped. They are empowered. Then they also receive the blueprint of God's current emphasis. It's one of the highest advantage of coming together. When believers come together, the whole territory can hear what God is doing now. Don't assume that because God moved in a particular way yesterday, that's what He's still doing today. When a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133, a convergence for the purpose of being equipped, it is for this reason that God anointed some. He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory. So what, what happens here every week is the will of God. A convergence of men and women. Are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd, that there, there is a joke. Are the people cheers? The more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God, provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of 5 million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't Jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation than any other person who is interested? No, he died for the whole world. Don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds. Just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd. When you reject it, it looks like you are being spiritual. But that's been carnal. Anybody that knows God must love people. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47. They continued. Acts 2. And they continued. Look at me. Who are the they? The community of believers within that territory. They continued steadfastly, consistently, unbendingly in the rain, in the sunshine, convenient or not convenient. The sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you. There are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little heat somewhere they say I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too uh, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possession and their goods and parted them, etc., etc., 46. And they, continuing daily, not even weekly, the church of old, they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do 
Who is the person who brings the crowd? A man of God? Please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory. You can invite animals by gimmicks, not men. Men are not stupid. A crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots. There are people who are sensible and went to school. When you see crowds, God brought them. Don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment. No, sir. No, sir. There may be one of two exceptions, but you don't generalize. There are places God is doing mighty things. This place is one of them. The Bible says, and the Lord added to the church. How many? Daily. Such as should be saved. So the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation. There must be regular convergence. When Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory, he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren. Are you seeing that now? That's why things like a crisis is very bad. Because among other things, it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn. Thank God for platforms. Technology has afforded greater opportunities today. Most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow. There are all kinds of opportunities for growth. Number three. How is the kingdom advanced in a territory? How are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory? Ready? An open display of real miracles, signs, and wonders beyond the church walls. Let me tell you how God is institutionalized in a territory. An open display, not a private, quiet, secret, doubtful manifestation of His power. An open display of real genuine miracles, signs, wonders that are beyond the church wall. Out of all the miracles Jesus performed, please write it and look up. Out of all the miracles Jesus performed, less than 1% of them was done in the church. Is that true? He was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body. They were going out. A woman was crying, had lost her son, had lost her husband. And he said, what's going on here? And he said, this woman is about to leave. He stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life. Do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known, it doesn't bring God glory. The glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done. I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God. Our mother came here and shared testimony. Our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life. Do you know what that does to you? It strengthens your faith. And then when the miracle happens in your presence, it is beyond doubt. That's why, listen, listen. If you are a man of God here, you must trust God for grace, for instant performance of the word. Instant performance. It is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results. But there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching God in action. You saw it before, during, and after. When Jesus finished declaring his, his um, call in Luke chapter 4, he told the guy with the withered hand, he said, for starters, to prove to you the hand of God is upon me, Mr. Man, stretch your hand. When he stretched his hand, that was beyond doubt. The highest that can happen to you is you will be criticized and hated. But I assure you God will be glorified. An open display. Why do we need an open display of miracles within territories? It creates convictions. Not just in the heart of church members. In the heart of the community. Many communities do not believe in God. Because they have not seen Him coming. 
in an open display. The day God anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say, God revealed to me that in, in five months they are going to tar this road. And people laugh at you and say, stupid pastor, if you want cheap publicity, go on air. And all of a sudden, a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months. You don't need to tell them God has done it. The next time they see you, that convicting power, the day you now speak and say, I saw death in this community, they will not laugh at you again. They do not take our words serious. Do you know why? Bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God. Something that defies principalities and signs and wonders. Most of this open display is largely done in the south. That's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there. The, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings, the miracles that happen, you will see people sitting on the street, selling akara, selling pap, and watching people rise up from wheelchairs. Now, let me tell you, it does not matter how hardened you are. If you see a real miracle, you must go back and think about it. You can choose to argue, but the truth still remains the truth. What has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting? Those who have laughed at you and said, Koinonia, every time you must trust God for an open display. Everybody say an open display. That one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden, someone that is to go for surgery, maybe your loved ones, just because you stepped in there, while they are busy criticizing a man of God on TV, you look and say, Daddy, the Lord just said I should tell you that this cancer is gone. And he laughs, hey, young boys, I was with you. I, was, I remember serving God in boys' brigade when I was growing up. While they are talking all that drama, there is instant miracle. And he touches his stomach. He will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say, no, no. What is happening? And within a short time, the Lord is glorified. Let me tell you what they will start calling you. Uh, where is prophetess? Pastor, evangelist, we are about to pray. Is God saying anything? That's a sign that God is working. God is working something powerful in this time. God is raising mighty men in our days. He won't stop. He won't stop. To his church just like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop. To my life. chapter 19 please quickly Acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words our noise is too much. We need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the Spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body, this is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. Today, we just use it out of showmanship. A man of God just says, hey, What did you say is wrong with you, sir? Darkness is all over our house. So bring his handkerchief. I hold it. We spit on it. We rub it on our face. People carry it back home like a charm. One year after that handkerchief arrived home, nothing happened. It's a sign that there's no power. Period. Obed Edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? 
if I lay hands on you to be delivered, and after two weeks you come back, one month, nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat and say, Lord, these hands. Otherwise, a day will come, the hands will just look like tissue paper. As it's coming on your head, you believe that nothing is happening. Keep these hands anointed, oh God. Keep these hands anointed. Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just in... No. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hand. He said, God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again, please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters, what has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh, let me agree with you. And we hold people. While we are praying, their eyes are opening. We are the only ones who close our eyes. Because they don't believe in us. They know that that prayer is just nonsense. In Jesus' name, amen. They say, thank you, sir. And they go back and say, sorry, can I see this man of God? Because that's the real person they know who solve their problems. I want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute. And say, Lord, put something upon this hand. Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a source of a cafe. Put an anointing upon my hands, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone. And with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves, upon them which had an evil spirit. You know the name of the Lord saying, we adjure you. They thought it's just by, by big manism or wearing nice clothes. And one day, they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits. Are we together now? We are reading to verse 20. And then, 14 says, And there were seven sons of one skiva, a Jew and a chief of the priest, which did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered them. That's the side effect of lack of true power. It's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi! Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you who are you, is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit. They are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you. And all of a sudden, the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say, sorry, I don't know what happened. My mind is, ah, no. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Break every ch
progress. Verse 16. We are reading to 20. And the man in whom the evil spirit was, did what? Left on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. The consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real. There are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited, but its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors, which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people. They will do anything. You are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed, but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free. You just get up by yourself, carry a bottle of oil, and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft. I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ. And you go there. As soon as you get there, you start pouring oil around the compound. Nobody talks to you. You just find out that that night, as you are sleeping, the next day, you get up and find yourself in the hospital. What happens? They say that's how the spirits work. They don't talk to people. The next thing you just, whatever happens to you, is their answer. Listen, it's not everything you see that is, that is all that there is. When you see a man of God moving in the anointing, it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening. But there are interplay of spiritual laws. A man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder. And you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere. When that man, if he's spiritual, if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done. Are we together? It's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever. No. That's why we must grow. But as we grow, we must trust God to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight. There are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed, one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough. It will take the corporate body to bring it. We do not know. And one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him. So we must have that. That's just a lesson for us to learn. Let's read down, please, quickly. Media, don't take it away. Just leave it there so that we we'll hurry up, please. Help us. And this was known to all the community. Are you seeing now? Something unpleasant now is known to all the community. Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came upon them. And the name of the Lord was magnified. They saw the apostles healing the sick. And I'm sure that they said, What is there? What is there? Miracles. Anybody can heal. The sons of Sceva went to try it. When the demons beat them, it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere. And the Bible says that the people glorified God. And then verse 18 says, And many that believed did what as a result? They came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19, we are reading to 20. Many of them which also used curious acts. That means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it, it was working small by small. But when certain men came into that city, they got everyone packing out, including magicians. Do you think if that book did not do something for them, wouldn't they have thrown it since? They saw something superior and powerful. And the Bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who? A community. Imagine a popular herbalist in Bromo or somewhere, maybe Zaria City, bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and saying, I was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady. And just because I saw her cat walking, I thought it was all about the before. When I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them 
and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver, 20 popular scripture, so mightily green the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs, and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here, the power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now, you are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for koinonia. You will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. A true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter. It's until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely. Let me give us one more. There are six but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray. Number one is prayer. Number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory. Number three, an open display of miracles, signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Number four, intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. The fourth way, the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. This is a serious one. Let me tell you this. Failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget God. Not just forget his ordinances, but forget God. I'm watching that and I'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of Christ. And even the church in Zaria. Who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now? Everybody has left them and we are focusing on ministry. Who are the people mentoring those in secondary school? Thank God for FCS. Thank God for um, um, CEM. Thank God for all of these people. But there are some of you here. You need to go back. And begin to make sure that young people like Shade's child here, that by the time they are growing, they are not only receiving education alone. There must be an intentional mentorship of younger people. Most people, is the mistake of the American church, they left their children. So you will see a mother who was an old Baptist woman, served God all her life, but you will find out. That her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love God. We must concentrate. Right now, most people from the ages of 17 downwards, all they are obsessed about is phones, Android devices, PS4. I don't have a problem with it. But their entire obsession, oh, what OS are you using? You hear that? That's all they think about. Oh, I'm using this PS4. There's this. Ah, they need fire. Oh, they, need, they are not too young. They need serious fire. I'm not against that. It's the reality that comes with that age range. But we must be able to guide people. That's why I love it when you see our children come here for koinonia. I know that many of you say, ah, are they too young to understand? Ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand. You see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down. That's the child of a herbalist. And they tell you, ah, that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe. That small boy you are saying that is my son. Is your son in the physical. In the realm of the spirit is something else. An ancient spirit is seated on that small child. There is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things. They may be too small to articulate it, but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. 2 Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, he said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too. A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. 
God's plan is not superstar Apostle Joshua Selman. God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts, and your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so. May God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God. Say Amen. May God forbid that in Zaria, during a church service, we will have young people hanging around, sagging their jeans, and dancing around, and toasting themselves, instead of praying and crying to the God who can change any man's destiny. May God forbid that it's not your child that will refuse to know God. Listen, listen, listen. Our children must love God, and they must love God genuinely. Somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate God. I want you to beware. There is a secret indoctrination of a generation. Ages 5 to 15 must be preserved. Those of you here that God is calling you into children's ministry, receive an anointing for it. It's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets. Let them cram the memory verses. That's how we started. Children now don't know any memory verse again. You ask them. John 3.16, they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense. Teach them. Don't say it's not useful. Let them know. When we were being raised, they taught godly songs. Now in most schools, children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents. A little child is singing a song that even as an adult, you look at him and say, no, this should not be. There must be restoration of godliness. CEM, may God anoint you more and revive you more. Please. FCS, may God anoint you and revive you more. Individual children ministry groups, may God anoint you and revive you more. Because if you yourself are not revived, what will you teach the children? Bad things. Bad things. That's what our children learn now. Things that are more than their age. And we say it does not matter. It matters. You have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things. Don't let them watch it. Don't let them watch it. There are times you need to regulate. I'm not, I'm not trying to be harsh. But there are times you need to regulate all these this, a child of seven years watching television from morning till night, switching from one music channel to the other, hearing things and receiving them in the spirit, and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them. We must preserve godliness. Say amen. amen. You don't like what I'm saying? I don't plan to stop at all. We must say it again and again. Some of you, God gave you instructions before you became popular. To visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's a society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say, look, let's start talking to married men. Jesus said, let the little children come to who? Come to me. He says, and do not forbid them, for for such is the kingdom of heaven. Please return back to children's ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. When a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing. And you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But a rod of correction, not discussion. You don't have to be hostile on children. A little spank with two fingers. One, two. And then tell them what they did that was wrong. Don't just leave them cry. This is what you did. Mommy does not like it. Daddy does not like it. For that reason. One, two. Jesus too does not like it. In include Jesus. Let them learn. And know that it's not just you alone. Preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom. 
there's this song that says, Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. My generation shall made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God. It's a covenant I've entered with myself. There's no going back. There's no discussion. There's no hope of going back. To go back is to die in life and in death. It's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life. It is to serve Him forever and to introduce Him to a generation God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the first one. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your fourth born can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of their head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him is insulting you. Beat that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined. The day I give birth to a child who insults me, that that day, I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child, a child of maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years. No, see. Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though about to marry. Never over pamper children. Let them know discipline is part of love. Because most of our children will be born in millionaire families. You must discipline them. Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society. Pray, they say, no, I, the church is hot. Please, daddy, can you give me the car to the jeep? No, son, you are sitting down here. If me, your father, the owner of the jeep, the jeep is sitting down, you must sit down and pray. Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers including Christian schools. I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray. You have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class, they don't pray. What, what, is, what is the Christian about it? The teacher himself cannot pray. You never see a fasting program organized in the school. Nobody cares. While they are praying, the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again. Wait and let Koinonia start her schools. Oh yes, oh yes, let Koinonia start her schools. And you will see. There's nothing like I'm busy who will supervise it. It's a mandate. Don't do that I'm busy man of God and allow the devil kill your ministry. Sit down, open your eyes and see what is happening. This teacher's life is questionable. He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sam, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Would there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school. And say you are preserving standards. They laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountain Top University. But these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts. 
to keep and preserve God in eternity. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month. Or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid. Only to come and testify. Have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is it still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I love I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, Apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does. And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people, proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around. Colleague mentality. Some of you, you are in secondary school. Or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school. Thank God for what God is doing with them. And all of a sudden, this pompous, arrogant attitude. You see everybody and what is there. You see vision, I see vision. You pray for the sick, I pray for the sick. It's why we never receive. We keep making mistakes that are avoidable. Mistakes. Now let me tell you. Mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing. Because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored. But they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing. And they taught them rubbish. They taught them pride. They taught them a pompous life. They taught them a theology of imbalance. It matters who you listen to. It matters who you open up your spirit to. But that spirit must be open. Brothers and sisters, our generation is at stake. In the next 10 or 20 years, many of the people we look at today will be gone. It's, it's the truth. Do you believe that? Many of our fathers, they are already wrapping up. We insulted them. We said, ah! They came and they taught people, cover your head, don't cover your head. We insulted them. They taught people, die, 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 die. We insulted them. Now the button is being passed to us. Let's hear what our children will say about us. We insulted them. We refused to see what God was doing to them. And as young as we are, we kept running our mouth insulting them. They preserved the button. Some of them today, look at great men like Papa Ilya Demoye. People like Billy Graham still alive. These men serve God to the end. Let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency. That's the song, my very powerful song. That's the last song we'll sing this night. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? I'm trying to remember it. Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, listen, all my treasures will be nothing. The cheap and the duplex. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Am I against prosperity? No. 
But if that's all you can give a generation, if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree, you have failed. Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in Mary clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've told me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone listen we're not going to be here forever no matter how you don't want to believe me nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth live your life fresh. we owe our generation and our children a debt I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth if it means my life going for it let it go but the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation this is ministry if you are not ready for this don't jump around and talk nonsense a lady sent me a text today passionately she may be following listening and she said apostle she's from my village she said apostle come to my village why have you not come i said don't worry you think i won't come there i'm coming god is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you i'm not a man of god it doesn't matter there are souls if god planned that in pastor alpha's lifetime you are supposed to save 100 million people. Do you know if you save 20 million people, the world will clap for you. But it's when you get to heaven, God will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest. If God has anointed you to heal 1 million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies, they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say, it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Great revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata Makoto Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, 
across Shika. In the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved. Preserved in our campuses. Preserved in every church. Preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray. Who stand on the gap on behalf of our land. We stand in the gap on behalf of our land. Come on our knees. We'll take our stand. And pray for the sea for our land. second part it says the power of darkness release our land will never prevail will never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion those who will rise up and pray Stand in the gap on behalf of our land. We stand in the gap on behalf of our land. Down on our knees, we take a stand and pray for the seed of our land. We'll pray for the need of our land. Controlling powers over Zaria will cost you. Lift your voice and pray. We cost you from region to region. The powers that keep men poor, the powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land, the powers that stop development, the powers. That stop advancement. The powers that destroy men of God. The powers that destroy churches. The powers that destroy families. We come against you by the blood. We come against you by the blood. As the church of the Lord Jesus. We come against you. We come against you. Controlling powers over territories, spirits of violence, spirits of wickedness, yokes, burdens, spells, enchantments, divination, manipulations of the heavenly bodies. We come against you. In the name of Jesus, the body of Christ grows. Zaria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone. But can we pray for Nigeria? We Listen. As God looks at the map, He's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself in the realm of the Spirit. 
let God not see different localities. Some villagers and God will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check Zaria and say, Zaria, where is your incense? I like us to pray and say, Nigeria is my business. Nigeria is God's business. Peace to the world. Peace to the borders. Peace in the east, peace in the north, peace everywhere. We fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus. We declare and declare. We manifest our priesthood. We are not stands. We are not stands. Unto God, we raise an incense of intercession over this nation. Nigeria is God's own nation. Nigeria, amalgamated by the hand of God Himself, we command from border to border the spirits of bloodshed. We curse you. We curse you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Let's pray against the spirit of sentiment. Are we together? Whether Christian, whether Muslim, the truth is that we must live alone. And we must live together. Are we together? Whether whether Igbo, whether Yoruba, whether South South, whether Northerner, the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves. We were brought by God. Let's cause the spirit of darkness. People have lost lives.
South, south, south east, north east, north central, south west. There's remaining one. Please, our time is gone. North west. Kaduna, where else again? North Central, you can start Pastor Alpha. This is Nigeria. I'd like us to pray and prophesy that as the hands are joined in hands, any spirit trying to destroy us. The evil man will love the Yoruba man. The house man. We love the south south man. We cause the spirit of hatred. We cause the spirit of hatred. We cause the spirit of hatred. By this prophetic act, we declare Nigeria, arise and shine. Arise and shine. Hallelujah. Listen. God is not just a God of Christians. He's the God of everyone. We are praying for everybody in Zaria around. Let the Muslims prosper. Let Igbo people prosper. Let Yoruba prosper. Don't antagonize anybody. Lift your voice and say, Father, because of our presence, Nigeria must prosper. Lift your voice and pray. Take away any tribal sentiment. All we want is to see Jesus glorified in our nation. Jesus glorified in every home. Jesus glorified in every geopolitical zone. All I want is for you. following us and all the territories in this nation we declare that God and his purposes will not be lost in any territory in the name of Jesus regardless of the church the ministry and the individuals may the purposes of Christ be preserved Lord we pray for Zaria our Jerusalem we declare that Jesus remains Lord we declare that Christians, Muslims are all blessed in this nation. We decree and declare that everyone here in Zaria is blessed because of the presence of God's people. And Father, we pray for our beloved nation. Our heroes gave their blood to see where we are today. We command every spirit that wants to plant enmity against one person and another we banish them from this nation in the name of Jesus as your priests we lift up our voice from this side of your kingdom and we declare that as far as this territory is concerned we remain one I decree and declare by this apostolic grace and under this platform the church in Zaria remains one there is no Igbo church there is no Yoruba church there is no Hausa church there is only the church the Ecclesia God's own place in the name of Jesus there will be no hatred and no violence within this border 
father we commit our people here representing this nation prophetically let there be the spirit of love and unity every plan and purpose that is not of god to cause trouble to kill people to maim people to destroy lives and properties we banish it in the name of jesus and lord we thank you we ask for grace that our priesthood will be the reason why every territory we find ourselves will love you and live for you in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Our time is gone, but please listen. It's a spiritual responsibility. Never move around because of what is happening around the nation and start antagonizing anybody. Are we together? In Koinonia and everywhere, I have never, never shown any tribal prejudice. Or any of these things, no. Whether you are Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, South South, I've gone to all the geopolitical zones in this nation and they love me everywhere. They have received me wholeheartedly. Nobody cared where I came from. Are we together? We must propagate love and peace. Don't join ignorant people carrying all kinds of things. You turn and start hating evil people everywhere. Turn and start hating northerners everywhere. And pastors, let's be careful. The pulpit is not where we used to, to, to build hate. Are we together? No pastor, no man of God. There are many listening to me. No man of God should go and take their pulpit and tear down another locality. That's not what God asks us to do. We are to preach love. We are to preach peace. Not even against Muslims. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are people, most of the people transporting you now after service, they are outside, they are hearing me. Most of them are Muslims. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers. We've had a very healthy relationship with them for years. There are many people who help to serve in various things in the ministry. They are not Christians. We love them. We pray for them. But we must treat them with love and honor. The head of the Nigerian Union Road Trans of Transport Worker, when, they, when his wife gave birth, the protocol department went to go and visit him in the hospital. You see them come for our dinner. Christians or Muslims, that's not our business. We invite them for dinner and we love them. This is how the kingdom advances. By the time we start bringing all these prejudices, when people act, it is because of spirits, not religion. It is because of spirits, not culture. We must be smart so that our lives will be advocates of truth. This is why God anoints people. This is ministry for such a time as this. Every man of God here, you have a responsibility to sensitize your people to promote love. Are we together? Don't, those of you who are on Facebook, don't go and join all these dull comments by people who don't know God. Post something and then you say it on behalf of Koinonia. It will be an indictment to both God and us. I stand here on behalf of the ministry to, to present our position to the numerous people. We are people of love. We love God. We love government. We love state. We love everybody. Are we together? Our job and our assignment as given by God is to pray for the peace of this land and to contribute our quota to the building of the body of Christ and not to come in with all kinds of ethno-political and religious sentiments. No. Be a promoter of peace or just be silent and pray. If you have nothing to do online, don't go and begin to instigate violence and then say you are a Christian and attach the names of men of God, destroy their reputation online because of carelessness. We must be sensitive. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ.